Hey guys, so I want to talk about you know what makes how can you make a drive plug and play and what makes a drive plug and play. Um, first things first, let's that we have to talk about the emulators and how the emulators work. Um, so we'll start with Sega Model 2. Sega Model 2, your player one is automatically already set up. You don't have to do anything uh, to configure the gun in Model 2 uh, for the crosshairs or for the the gun to track. Um, in the game and use it. Your trigger is already automatically set up in the emulator and it automatically has the calibration going on for it. Uh, you might have to calibrate inside a couple of the games to make it more on point, but otherwise it automatically moves around and tracks. Sega Model 3, your player one also already does the same thing. You don't have to do anything, your trigger automatically works and it will automatically track too. Now, for Model 2, if you want two players to work, you need the Mool Shooter, and you need to adjust your config file. I'm not going to show you how to do the config file, because that's all online, but you need the Mool Shooter, and then I also use AHK files. So here you can see the Mool Shooter is set up, which will automatically make play two players work, as long as you have the paths, pass correct, obviously, and your config file is changed. Um, then your two players will automatically work, and you don't have to do anything else. That includes your trigger. Sega Model 3, in order to have two players work, you need to adjust the Super Model INI file for your mouse numbers and the order that the mouse or that the gun or the PC reads the mouse, which is the light gun. And how do you do that? Well, you can do that by using Arcade Light Gun Pro Utilities. So as you can see I have nothing plugged in here, but if I plug in my player two, which or my player one, which I'll show you right now. Let me plug it in. There's my gun number one. As you can see, it is the second one from the top, which makes it mouse number two. And as you can see right here, I have mouse number two set up right here, and mouse number two set up right here too. Now, if I plug in a third gun, or a second gun right here, I'm sorry, because they will be uh, order number three, and then you change mouse number two to order number three, just like it is right here. Hit file and save, you're all set. I'm gonna unplug my gun. And that's all you have to do, and then those are those work. So Model 3 isn't exactly plug and play, but you have to adjust the config file. Once you adjust the config file, the gun automatically works, which makes it plug and play, actually. Um, Demul, uh, which runs with say, uh, Naomi and Thomas Wave and Retro, uh, yeah, Retro Arch, I'm sorry, Dreamcast and um, Hikaru, uh, automatically set up for player one, two. In order for player two to work, you have to use Demul Shooter and set it up with either a bad file or a HK file. I have a HK file set up right here as you can see. And you don't have to configure the trigger in the emulator and you don't have to configure the access for it to work to either for calibration. You might have to do some calibration inside some games to make it more on point. Um, but otherwise, if you don't do that, the gun will still automatically work. And that's how you set up two players by using the Mool Shooter. Um, and that makes it plug and play. It's plug and play no matter what for player one. Um, but if you want player two, you have to set up the remote shooter to make a plug and play for one and two players at the same time. It's that simple. Then you have Dolphin. Dolphin will automatically track the gun no matter what. So you don't have to do anything in Dolphin at all to make the gun track, but you do have to adjust the gun controllers. So you go to the configure options, and then your button B is your trigger, your button A is one of the clicks on the side, I usually use the front left, and then your plus button has to also be a click 2 which is click number 1 which will make it the start button uh, and then your gun will control the emulator it's automatically tracked so you don't have to change anything else and then you're all set and done and this is my drive this automatically I have already this set up so this will come set up if you get a drive uh, and you're paying for my customer service too when you get my drive and my assistance for setup PCSX2 I already have the configs all set go to the game configs you can see 8037 is set up for gun number one already. Right? If I had a gun number two for the AE light gun, I would also have it set up for gun number two too, but at least gun number one is set up. On my other drives, because I have this I have it set up for every single light gun that's on the market, the PIDs are already in here and you're good to go. If you do need to, to reset that line right there, I do have a tutorial on my page that shows you how to set up PCSX2. It's very simple, it's very fast. Uh, so if for some reason that is not plug and play, it's very easy to very quick, quick and easy to change it. And if you have the drive for me, I'm happy to help. If you don't, I'm still happy to help. Send me a message. I'll give you a hand. Retroarch. Um, 
you have to configure the settings in RetroArch, obviously. So if you go to your settings, go to your input, oops, go back, there we go. Go to your port one binds, and then right here under your gun, configure your trigger, your mouse one, your mouse two, and what they, what they are, you're good to go. Those carry over. Port two, whoops, that's okay, don't worry about that. Port two, mouse one, mouse two, one and five for start. Good to go. Those carry over. You don't have to lock those, you don't have to do anything. Those settings automatically carry over no matter what in RetroArch to anything that you copy it to. Doesn't matter. Techno Parrot, uh, most of all the games except for three light gun games can use the Mool Shooter, which makes it plug and play. Um, you can also set it up for raw input if you want to for all of the shooter games, but that doesn't make it plug and play now, does it? Because you have to set it yourself. Um, there are only three games for Techno Parrot that you cannot use the Mool Shooter with, which means you have to configure three games. So three out of, I think, nine or twelve games are not plug and play. No big deal. Aliens, Far Cry, and Star Trek are not plug and play. They only use raw input. Aliens can use um, the Mool Shooter if you want. But if you use the Mool Shooter with it and your gun is not configured inside the game itself, then you will have to calibrate the gun inside the game itself for it to work. Um, you don't have to do that if you use the raw input setting on Techno Parrot UI. So it's a lot easier to just use the Techno Parrot UI. It avoids a calibration inside one of the games and you're good to go. So the, everything else is using the Mool Shooter. Transformers using the Mool Shooter, two players are set up. Everything is set up universally as player one start um, equals one, player two start equals two, player one coin equals five, player two coin equals six. That's universally on this entire build. So those go perfectly and you don't have to do anything with them. Um, the other thing you have to do is go to your third party folder Go to the mule shooter, open your GUI, and then you plug your gun in and then you select your gun, right? We didn't cover MAME. Let's talk about MAME. Can you make MAME pre-configured to carry over to any computer drive? Absolutely you can. People with coin ops do it all the time. And that's how coin ops controllers for Xbox are automatically set up, and that's how they work. So if we go to MAME, nothing's plugged in. So you're not going to see a gun plugged in. It's going to say NA under 1, 2, and 3. Same thing under the AD stick and the light gun, too. It's going to say NA, 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 NA. Same thing with player 2. NA, 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 NA. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. <laughs> NA, NA, and then light gun is NA, and then light gun Y, where are you? Right there is NA. Well, that's mouse. Light gun Y is right here. That's NA, X is NA. It's confusing when you're looking at it. Uh, or it makes your eyes go cross-eyed sometimes. That's XL, right? That was this main. I'm going to plug in my player one gun, which is the AE light gun. Right? Well, before I do that, actually, let me show you this. The controller file. I have my gun set up as gun number six, okay, in my controller file. These are joysticks that I had on, on a, uh, my personal arcade, so I left these in here too in case anybody needs to change it. But I had it set up as gun number six for player one and gun number seven for player two. Why? Because I had a four player layout along with a flight stick. So one, two, three, four, and five uh, controller codes were already used. So I made my gun number one and gun number two, six and seven. So that's how it'll always show up. And as you can see, my PID is 8037, just like we've seen in the arcade light gun utility. And um, what do you call it? It'll that's it's going to show up when I plug it in now. So let's go to main. I'm going to plug in my light gun. We're going to go to main. We're going to go to configure options, general inputs, player one controls. Look at that! How fucking magical is that? It somehow automatically showed up. Uh, because it was already pre-configured and the configurations are locked. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. But as you can see, gun 6, gun 6. Previous menu. Now, as you can see that right there, let me plug in 
my second player, which is a gun for IR gun. Okay. And that ID code is 8043, as you can see. Let's go back to MAME. Go to player two. Look at that. Player two shows up now as gun number seven. And that shows up over the all three main folders that I have in here. Because I lock the configurations. So the configurations can carry over to any build, to any computer, whoops. To any build, to any computer, to anything. It'll carry over because the configuration is locked. How do you lock the configuration? You go to the CFG folder and then you go to the default. Right click it, hit properties. It's set as read only, which locks it. If you uncheck that, and I carry that over to another computer out of this folder, it's not going to carry over, and you will have to reconfigure your gun in MAME. By clicking, by checking read only and apply, that will carry over to any computer and to any folder that I drag these MAME emulators into. So which makes MAME plug and play, because you don't have to set it up and do anything. So I had Area 51 is already adjusted too. You don't have to do anything with that either. Good to go. So that's how you make a plug and play drive and that's what makes a drive plug and play. So I'm gonna unplug my uh, light guns here. And that's what I just showed you. It's not, it's not a secret. You know, like I said, coin ops builds do that. You know, it's, it's not a secret that you can lock the configs into read only so that the configs will stay. Now, if that's set as read only and you go to try to change your configuration and change the INI file, or not the INI, excuse me, sorry, I got some gas. Not change the INI file, change the, uh, the controller file to a different gun number and you try to reset it that way, it'll just come up as NA and it's gonna blank it out because it's locked. So you're going to have to unlock it to change it and then relock it so that it stays and carries over. Whoops, I just dropped my microphone, sorry. So that it carries over to every any any folder, any build that you do. Anybody can do that. I'm not a genius by doing that. And there's no secret to it. That's what makes that plug and play. Now you do have to set up things on my drive. And I have tutorials on here on how to set up the drive initially. There are things on here that are not plug and play like your um, window settings. If your window security is on, your antivirus is on, and your firewalls are on, you're going to have to disable those. Because if your de Windows Defender is on and you have an antivirus running, it's going to flag the games as a virus and quarantine them and possibly even delete them. So your security has to be disabled before you even plug the drive in. Or I'm sorry, not before you plug the drive in, but before you run a game. You have to disable all the window security. Step number two is House of Dead 3. House of Dead 3 is not a portable game. You have to set it up on every single computer that you plug this drive into or you uh, copy that folder over to because it's not, a, it's not a, a portable game at all. So I have a step on how to install that. And then I have a step on how to install and use Joy to Key. And then I talk about the three Techno Parrot games and how to configure those uh, for the gun themselves too. Very simple. And then Silent Hill. Silent Hill has its own demo shooter and for some reason I can't get the player one start and player two start and escape to carry over in settings so I made a little video that's about two minutes long on how to set that up. Model three, that's where I show you how to change the config file. Very easy, very simple. And then all the Windows games, they run off the move shooter. Which is also in my step three when it shows you how to set up um, Joy to Key. So all these games run off of the mule shooter, except for maybe two of them. Blue Estate doesn't use the mule shooter, and uh, neither does Mad Bullets. Uh, so all these run off the mule, and neither does Reload. All these run off the mule shooter, except for a couple of them. And then once you set your demule shooter in an, under your third-party folder over here, every single game that uses the mule shooter is officially plug and play. That's why I have steps, and that's why I have it as step number three on my drive because that should be step number three before you go into anything else simple as that so there you go guys there's some tips for you on how to make a drive plug and play um, and that goes for any configs and any drive that you want to do if you are doing arcade sticks and you lock those main configs like that with your arcade sticks 
if you plug your arcade sticks into the encoder the same way every single time you make a new arcade, those MAME configs are going to carry over and you don't have to reconfigure MAME. And that goes for anything else you want to use MAME for too and any other thing. Xbox controller, PlayStation 4 controller, whatever controllers. I don't think PlayStation 4 controllers I think shows up as an X input, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but any controller that you plug in and you set it up that way with MAME, that'll make it plug and play. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that clarified some things as for plug and play and that you guys understand that there is a few steps you have to do to initially set the drive up. There's only three games you have to configure with the gun that are not plug and play and one game you have to install. Other than that, it's just a matter of just adjusting a couple things on the drive for the guns to work in harmony and you're good to go. So thank you so much for watching this. Hit that like and subscribe and hit that bell guys.